everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. I'm back with Travis, and he has brought in a brand new game to show off, um, which is gonna be commercially available very soon, and that is Maelstrom's Edge by Spiral Arm Studios. Now, they ran a really successful crowdfund, um, how long ago now, about a year ago? Uh, August uh, or so? Yeah, okay, so I think I remember it being like eight, nine months ago, and it is fully out and done, like no problems on time, all their books are out, all the model kits are out, and they're just getting ready to actually put stuff uh, forward to retailers. So when, when you guys see this, um, it's likely either around the same time as, or about to be um, released to like retail sale, uh, and this is the Battle for Zycanthus, the two player starter set, and you backed it. Yes, I did. Yeah, really excited about it. I did. And in a Clarencian style um, fit of madness, decided he was gonna paint two armies, drive up here from Massachusetts, and show us how to play the game. So we are gonna check out Battle for Zycanthus. There's some extras and stuff in here too, so he's basically brought two balanced armies of Karist Enclave and the Epirian Corporation, or Foundation, sorry, um, which are the guys basically surviving on the Maelstrom's Edge. So the basic premise of the game is, there's this huge thing called the Maelstrom, which is funny, because it reminds me of a game called For the Maelstrom, where there's this huge, like, like rip in space energy ball thing and all the planets are slowly descending into it and getting like destroyed and eaten um, and what happens is the people are trying to basically survive on the edge of it the charists believe that it's like divine so they're kind of like the unitologists were in dead space where like they think that it's all going to be good and we should all just embrace and love the evil energy field that's slowly destroying our civilization um, and they like make use of like weird maelstrom monsters that like live on the edge of it and eat its energy and stuff to like do battle and they're being fought by the Epirian Foundation, who are sort of like the remnants of our current society, government, whatever it looks like in the future, um, to basically control and survive at the edge of this giant apocalypse that's constantly happening. So you wanna talk about two minutes to midnight, this is like the ultimate two minutes to midnight setting where everyone's about to be consumed by a giant galactic energy hole. So let's take a look at um, some of the components that he brought in, the armies, uh, and we'll have him walk us through the game. So here's the Battle for Zycanthus uh, box set, if you're wondering what it looks like. Um, it's standard GW starter set size, pretty much. Um, it comes with two forces. Now, what's not included in the starter set? Because we've got two balanced forces here, this isn't entirely it. Can you point out what would actually yeah. be in the box? Uh, so everything would be in the box, except for three of these Karis Troopers. Okay, cool. Um, that's the only other thing I've added to this force. Just to balance it out, cool. So you do get like these two giant robots, what are they called? Uh, they're Hunters. Hunters, you get the Scarecrows, which are the little robots over here. Yep. You get the drones. Yep, these Firefly drones, yep. and then Spider drones. And then these guys are just like yep. troopers? Yeah, just general contractors. They're like uh, future mall security. Right. Um, and then you have a drone handler, and a like even better drone handler. So he's like the leader drone handler? Yeah. Cool. And and it looks like for the most part, the Epirian Foundation, they use robots to go to war, and these guys are just there to like maintain and kind of like keep them running. Not Absolutely. so much as like actually using infantry. And then over here we got the Karist Enclave. Yep. And they use dudes. They so it's all just dudes. <laughs> all sorts of dudes. So here we have the uh, Tempest Elites who are like basically uh, what would be Space Marine level. They walk around with giant mortars. Right. Um, and then we have two groups of just regular Karist troopers as well as two assassin style uh, units here. Okay. And and those guys basically run around and, and do whatever they want. And then we have their uh, religious leader uh, over in this corner whose uh, main deal is to run up and explode amongst the... Uh... It's not doing a very good job of leading if he explodes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and then, then, these are the minnows, the yep, little guys? Little guys are minnows, big one's an angel. Okay. Uh, and that's the monsters that live in the energy field around the maelstrom, I guess? Yes, they are. And they kind of tame them by feeding them maelstrom snacks and telling them to go fight. Basically. <laughs> cool, awesome. Um, now you're also gonna see other components. There's cardboard blast markers. This game does use a suppression system, a lot like Epic, um, from what I understand. And so you get all of these card blast markers. These are th uh, threes, yeah, threes, fives, and tens. There's smaller ones too that are ones. And they keep track in different colors, basically. So like orange ones for the Epirians, and then purpley ones for the uh, other side. Uh, who has got how many blast markers on them for like tracking damage and stuff. You get some standard size templates, they're in heavy card, they're actually really robust, and you get an A5 scale rulebook, so pretty familiar if you play general sort of like war gaming. Now it's worth noting too um, that these are all hard styrene, so they're GW plastic, the yep. same kind of plastic, you glue it with polystyrene cement, uh, and they're that kind of posable. There is also a uh, scenery pack of scenery accessories, so instead of doing like a whole 
sort of like range of like full buildings and stuff. These guys made a kit of like ladders and doors and edges and consoles. So you can take any kind of like blocky shape and make train out of it. I would have literally killed a whole bunch of human beings for that when I was like a kid. Because you know, when you're a kid and you're making scenery, you're literally just dumpster diving for stuff. And this would just make anything that was pulled out of your garbage um, or an interesting shaped container that used to have yogurt in it into a piece of scenery. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do it over and over again. So I think that's really neat. So there it is, there's the starter components for the Battles I Can't This. We're gonna set up a game and start walking through the rules. Now, all right, so to show you the basic rules, we're gonna go through three steps. The first one is the anatomy of a unit. So what's cool about this game is they give you unit cards. So walk us through all these stats. Sure. Um, and we'll go from top to bottom. So even the symbols up top, show me what those are. Absolutely, so this is basically what the type of unit is. This is a leader unit. Uh, it's got a little flag to demonstrate that. Uh, and then over here is its points cost. And then as we move down, you'll see a whole series of different skills. Uh, MV is movement. This guy can move seven inches a turn. EVS is evasion. Uh, and that is used to sort of see if they can dodge an attack. So how do you use that in opposed to what somebody's skill if you're getting attacked? Absolutely. And then someone's skill is uh, usually how they shoot or how they fight in close combat. Um, additionally, there is AV, which is sort of the strength of their armor that they're wearing. Uh, and that... Uh, denotes the penetration of, of uh, shots and, and the like. How they can bounce stuff, basically. Yep. Got it. And then mass is sort of their strength and toughness combined. It's the amount of wounds that, that need to be done before someone has actually dealt a wound. Yeah. So if you have a, and your fortitude is your number of wounds. Yeah. So, for example, here, if someone dealt three damage uh, to this journeyman bot handler, it would only do one fortitude point. You discard the odd number, basically. Got yeah. it. Um, and then lastly... Uh, there's willpower, which is sort of their leadership value. Cool. So that's your your ability to like resist you, the the suppression tokens and all the damage is going to come out to you. Absolutely. And you got some tags here on the side. Yep. So what this is is it sort of shows out what the model type is. So it could be infantry. You could be looking at a variety of other things like robot is an option. Additionally, there are things like uh, angels. Uh, angels. Yep. If you're a, if you're a giant monster. Um, and then the two subtypes are character and then human. So these things can also happen where you have an infantry robot or a uh, infantry angel or uh, something a little bit different, like a behemoth angel, which is sort of the larger The characters. bigger one. Yeah. Got it. Cool. And then down here we've got unit size, so how many you get? Yep. How many you get starting and the abilities. So the equipment is what your starting equipment is and your abilities there are sort of what you start with, but on the back of the card are all your upgrade options. Got it. So what you're seeing here is everything you can add to that unit. Um, this guy specifically can take uh, some extra guns, he can take some extra uh, sort of micro drone robots, and uh, since he's an HQ card, he has this sort of additional units of what he unlocks. Uh, each one of the HQ units will unlock sort of a uh, army type. Detachment? Similar, yeah, similar to 40k style, where um, you pick him and then you have 1 to 4 core choices, 0 to 2 hammer, 0 to 2 Vanguard, and 0 to 2 Anvil. And the cool thing about this is, is since you can only have 8 per detachment, um, if you were to stock up on core, you wouldn't really be able to take uh, a bunch of everything else, right. simply because you'll max out at 8. Um, and then additionally, you can only have as many uh, Hammer, Vanguard, and Anvil as you do core. So right. if you have two core, you can take up to two Hammer and two Anvil, but if you only have one core, you can only take one hammer and one anvil. Right. So if you take two of these, then you could take a combination of four of the rest of these, basically, for the rest of your detachment. Yes. Cool. So let's jump into that, building an attachment. So the standard game size we're looking at is between 120 and 150 points. This army right here is 121 points. It's as close as we can get to balanced. So initially, I'm going to pick a journeyman bot handler, and he is going to have a couple upgrades on him, including a secondary gun. So as we see, he's going to be our HQ. And he's got the yep. chart on it for the rest of this stuff. So we'll put him over here, and then you can build out the rest of the force. Sure. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pick some contractor engineers. So these three guys. And we're going to give them one extra upgrade, which is a grenade launcher on the bottom of this gun. Cool. Um, and that's our first of the core choices. Absolutely. And then our secondary core choice will be a unit of spider drones. So uh, this bot handler and these uh, other starts four with two. Drums. Yeah, it starts yep. with two. Yeah, starts with two, and then I'm going to add two more. And then he's all set. Cool. So that's our two core choices now. So we can take up to four 
of the other ones, basically. Yep. Hammers, anvils, or vanguards. So for uh, for hammers, I'm going to select a Scarecrow Sniper, and he has an option on the back which allows him to uh, have a multi-unit selection. So I can take two separate Scarecrow Sniper units as one single selection. All right, so you're 80 to one detachment slot, but you yep. get two guys, and they operate individually. Yeah, Got so it. I have two of those set up right now. Cool. And then uh, as a Vanguard, I'm going to go over here and pick this Firefly Recon Drone unit. Uh, you start with three. I'm going to add an additional one just so that we can get a more filled out unit. Cool. And then I'm going to pick two separate Hunter Class War Mechs. Now these are sort of the uh, crisis suits of Tau where you can right. really add up to what uh, guns you're getting. Really outfit them to take on certain units. Cool. So what have they got for guns? So we have a flat gun and a maglock chain rifle, uh, as well as two cluster missile pods. Also two cluster missile pods, suppressor machine gun, that's sort of like a uh, dual machine gun, really laying out fire. And then another uh, suppressor, no, not, not a suppressor, a um, hydrolock Ma gun. Gotcha. Yeah. Ma the maglock chain gun, is that the yeah. one? Yeah. Got it. Long name gun. Cool. All right, so there it is, 120 points of the... Um, what is it? The Epirian. Epirian Foundation. So let's take a look at the Enclave. All right, so the same process for the Karis then. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and start with our Kadar Nover, who is the uh, sort of the HQ over here. The Gene Sealer cult leader? Gene Sealer cult leader. I like that he has no unit options, though. You just yeah. get him. That's you just you get, get him. He hangs out. Um, so he's going to be our leader. Uh, and then we're going to get some core choices. It shows like he unlocks the exact same stuff. Yeah, so you can have one to four core, zero to two hammer, zero to two vanguard, and zero to two anvils. Absolutely. So we'll start with some Karis Troopers. We'll pick two different squads. Uh, one squad will be five men, uh, shown here. And they're going to get a singular upgraded gun, so we'll give them this uh, rad wave emitter. Sort of like a uh, evil flamethrower in the future. Then we're going to get another squad with a grenade launcher, because why not? Uh, next, we'll do Shadow Walker. Shadow Walker, similar to the Scarecrow, has the multi-unit selection rule. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick two of those. This little assassin guys? Yep. Yep, so so far we're at one, two core, and that means we can have four of something else. So these are Vanguard? Uh, yep. That's one Vanguard choice. And then we're gonna go ahead and jump into another core. Add the Angel Minnow pack. So just four of these little guys. Uh, you start with three, I'm gonna add an additional one just to uh, even out the units a little bit. And that one won't stay up because I'm bad at moving. <laughs> um, Followed by the last core choice, which is a mature angel. That's crazy that they're core. So you could just have an army of like four of those if you wanted to. Yeah, they will eat up your points real fast. Yeah, yeah. they're the most expensive thing here. They're like 23 points to start off with. That's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, and then lastly, we're going to go with some Tempest Elites, which are sort of the... Uh, space Marines. Yeah, the big bad Space Marines. Uh, and to start with two, I'm going to add an additional two, so we have a squad of four. Cool, and there it is, 120 points of the Karist Enclave. So here we have setting up a game. Um, we have two kinds of cards here. We have the competitive mission cards and the narrative mission cards. So why don't you walk us through those? Sure, so these are the narrative mission cards. They're mainly used to sort of do a lopsided, sort of interesting story-driven game. Uh, probably gonna go ahead and use these another time. Yeah, we'll use them for our next game. You'll see that next week, guys. Yep. So I'll just pop these out of frame. Uh, and these are the competitive cards. Now, what this is is uh, sort of a unique way to start a game. Similar to, to other gaming systems, uh, you have six different options. What you can do here is they want you to sort of shuffle them together uh, after sort of talking about there's anyone you don't specifically want to do. Yeah, so if I've been playing Split Research a lot, I could just say, you yeah, know, Trav, I've been playing Split yeah. Research a whole bunch, let's take it out of the deck and just shuffle up yeah, a new one. Just get rid so of it. So it kind of gives you the option right. of having like discourse with your opponent. Um, but obviously, if you're playing like a turn or something, you'd probably just shuffle all six. Yeah, you'd probably just deal with what you get. <laughs> yeah, cool. And then so you shuffle the deck and yep. you pull out a mission. Yep, so you shuffle the deck real quick. And we're going to end up with. Bloodbath. Cool, so now walk us through the anatomy of a mission card. So the anatomy of a mission card starts with just the simple deployment. Uh, standard, there are two types of deployments. Uh, we roll a D6 to get that selection. So we'll walk through that in a little bit. But uh, overall, the uh, there'll be special rules occasionally. This one, nice and simple, no. Uh, and then there's three different objectives. You have the primary objective, which is the main goal. Um, if you complete part of it, 
uh, which will be listed out in the rules for each specific mission. You'll get three points. Uh, if you complete the whole of the listing, you will get five. Yeah, and it looks like from going having looked at them, the the partial ones are like your round scoring. So every round, if you've completed part of the objective, you're going to score that many points, the orange one. And at the end of the game, usually the other one unlocks. And if you've managed to hold on to it round by round, you'll get those bonus points too. Absolutely. And then there's a secondary objective, which is sort of more... Um, kill things, grab things sort, yeah. of, sort of situation. And then lastly, a tertiary objective, which is uh, sort of... Faction-specific? Yeah, faction-specific, which is uh, Karist, which is find a secret hidden supply cache, or uh, Epirian, which is find a robot that's been roving around doing whatever it wants. Cool. So now mission completed, what does that mean? If I hit 14... Yep, so the goal is going to be to reach one of these sort of uh, totals. So, and if you both hit 14 at the same time, what happens? Uh, you have to get plus three in the other one? Yep. Gotcha. So the first person to get three higher than that wins. So you're going to need to have a plus three point of, of winning sort of to, to space win. it out enough. Yeah. Right. So if I have 13, you have 14. I don't win yet. I have to get to 16 basically Correct. to beat you. Cool. Um, they do give you these handy little VP trackers. And what's cool is they go from zero to nine. They flip over to go to 19. And if you actually go higher than that, the chip flips over to be at plus 10. So it does take into account if you're playing a huge game, you might rack up VPs like crazy um, and go over. So this is the foundation one. This is the enclave one. Um, and what we'll do right now is we'll set up. Um, so why don't we do our deployment? We'll roll for it and see what kind it is. And we'll get our units down. So deployment, we've got standard deployment. We have to roll a dice now. And one to three, it'll be pitched, which is this deployment. Four to six will be big flank. So it's going to be pitched, and that means 12 inches on pretty much across the way, but on one flank, you get to go up to 12 inches onto the side. You get to go all the way up in an L, basically, to 24 inches up, um, and then go, it looks like 18 inches in? Must be. We have to bid to see who the attacker and defender is. The attacker deploys first, sorry, the defender deploys first, and the attacker deploys second. We randomly pick a number in our heads, and we get to say it out loud. If we tie, we then roll off um, and add whatever we bid. And the guy who wins becomes the attacker. So he's going to get to see where everything is deployed. The defender gets STs. Now, what are STs? Those are suppression tokens. Basically, the stress your unit's under. Because you're charging into whatever the defensive position is. And STs are basically these little guys, and you would put them on units. So you, your opponent's army, if you're the attacker, will start already with some markers on them. Got it. So you don't want to pick a billion, because you can just win that roll by being like... I'm going to pick a billion, but yep. then every mar every unit would already start with three of these, yeah? Yep. Okay, cool. So um, let's pick randomly a number behind our backs. All right. Let's do it rock, paper, scissors styles. I'm going to go like this. Ha! Oh, I got two. All right, so I am the attacker, and the d difference of one is basically the amount of suppression tokens you're going to put out. So you will be putting down your army first, uh, and we'll show that after deployment. So we are deployed, um, and the defender, of course, the Karis deployed first. You've got... Uh, the Karist Elites over here. Okay. Uh, Angel. Got one Shadow Walker hanging out down there. Unit of Troopers. Unit of Troopers. Uh, the Nova has joined the Troopers over here. I got the Minos. And then up here, we have our last Shadow Walker. Right, because it's a big L. So you can go up to 18 inches into the middle, basically, from this edge. And then mine is the opposite. So I can go up to 18 on this side. And I've got my uh, unit of drones here with a drone controller. One of the Scarecrows up top. I've got my unit of engineer contractors with the journeyman uh, bot handler. And then I have my two Warmax, uh, the other Scarecrow, and the Firefly drones are up top here. Now I have an additional miniature I have to deploy. This is my tertiary objective. Um, he's a satellite relay, and he's actually an additional like model in my army. They recommend you model one, but the search that comes with one. And he can shoot, um, he can has a damage profile, can be destroyed. I deploy him anywhere in my deployment zone, and of course, uh, my opponent, just so that I can't be super janky, gets to move him six inches afterwards. So do you want to move him right now? Absolutely. And put him somewhere where he's not hiding behind a giant rock spire? Yep. Probably just right in range over here. Right, so he takes destroyed tests at the end of the turn, just like any other unit. Um, and if he's destroyed, then he's just gone. But if he survives, he generates an extra command point for me every turn. And those are important. They can get used, we'll explain that later, to do basically like leader-y things, like making guys braver and actually bringing back units even. Another little token down here under this bridge, that's a Keras supply cache. Um, and he, he can pass over the unit and pick it up. And he can either earn an extra VP from it for his treasury objective, if he doesn't do anything with it, because he's just like hoarding it basically, or every turn he can spend it for rerolls by using the extra ammunition inside. Um, but if he does that, he doesn't gain the bonus VP for holding it and not having it. And it gets deployed in no man's land. 
All right, so when playing a game of Maelstrom's Edge, there's a very specific turn order. Uh, you start with the command phase, which is sort of everything happening with uh, your leaders. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll for a priority. Okay. Ash is going to grab a dice. I'll grab a dice. I got a four. I got a four. Again. Yep. You win. Yep, I win. So I'm going to go ahead and pick myself as a priority player. And what that means is throughout the rest of this turn, uh, I'm going to go first and then I'll activate a unit, Ash will activate a unit, I'll activate a unit, etc. until we're done here. Um, when the priority t player's turn is, uh, is moving, what ends up happening is anything that happens at the same time, close combat, um, for example, I'll be doing that first. Um, so now that we've rolled for a priority, we're going to generate our command points, which is each sort of leader unit has a command value. Uh, both of ours have one. So we're both going to generate one command point plus the amount of turns. So we're going to have two command points each. And these will be our command tokens. So uh, we're both going to start with two. Command tokens are used for a bunch of things. Uh, you can use them to bring in reserves. You can use them to bring in reinforcements, which is a unit that's been totally destroyed. Or you can use them to remove those suppressant tokens we talked about earlier. Uh, the, a unit has to be within 18 inches of your HQ uh, for the command to be done, though. And that each one of those will remove one suppression token. So at the beginning of this uh, turn, I still get to add one suppression token because Ash bid higher than me. So there is the uh, one on this unit. All right, lastly, before we go into the action phase, we have two more steps, which is declare reserves and reinforcements, as well as allocate command points. Uh, right now, I don't think either of us have any reinforcements to, uh, to deal with, because nothing's dead. So I'm just going to allocate my points to uh, my leader, and I assume Ash is probably going to do the same. You got it. Sure, so one of the reasons that we, uh, we allocate these points is that during this character's activation, you can then use those points to remove STs. You can't do it during the command phase. It has to be during that action. There could be more than one character? Yep, you could have uh, multiple characters and multiple detachments. We're in the activation phase now, and uh, there's four steps to that. We do an activation discipline check, which is uh, weighing against your suppression tokens, which they currently don't have. So what happens if you don't have any? Uh, you get a successful discipline check, okay. and you get to continue to move forward. So let's talk about checks, because checks are something we haven't discussed yet. A check is you have to roll something versus something. So for a discipline check, what would that be? So a discipline check would be the number of suppression tokens you have versus your willpower okay. here. So let's imagine that they had one. Yep. So if you had a one, uh, if you had three willpower, which is more than double the amount of stress tokens you have, you would just need to roll a two plus or better. Right. So they would so be So now fine. let's imagine they had three, you'd be tied. Yep. So when you're tied, you need to get a four plus or better. Right. Uh, and the simple reason for that is just to sort of do the versus roll directly. Right, and then if you had six, they would be doubling you and you'd be passing on a five plus. Correct. So any versus roll is basically a scale system based upon how many, whatever the thing opposing that stat is. So if you have double, it's two plus. If you have more, it's three plus. If you have the same, it's four plus. And if you have twice as uh, many, it's five plus. So if you have less than half as many, it would be five plus. Got it, okay. So that's the discipline check. So we auto pass because we don't have any tokens. Yep. And then we perform our main action, which there are a series of. Um, and for example, you could do an advance and fire, make a single move, and then fire shooting normally. Uh, you could charge, make a double move, and then go into a close combat. You can dash, which is just make a double move and then make a wildfire, sort of just running and gunning. You can dig in, which allows you to either remain stationary and become pinned, which gives you a whole series of bonuses, or make a single move, become pinned, and then do some wildfire shooting. Now, pinned has a whole bunch of bonuses. Uh, you can get plus one to your cover value. You can shake off uh, some suppression tokens. Um, but there are some negatives. You can only fire at the closest target uh, when you're shooting. But uh, you do get a bonus for defensive fire checks. So you'll get a raise by one. So if you need a four plus, you now need a three plus to pass, which can be very useful. 
Then there's also hold and fire. You remain stationary and fire a single special round of shooting, either focused or suppressive fire. And those both have different bonuses. So that's like aiming, focused fire, and suppressive fire. You do extra stress tokens? Yes. Cool. And then there's some special main actions specific to each unit. So like a card might have, you can do cool X action or whatever. Absolutely. Awesome. And these are all the main actions that everybody can do in the game. Yes. For my first activation, these Karis Troopers are going to do a dash, which is a double move, and then a wildfire shooting. Okay. And they're going to grab this token over here, too. Yep. So we're going to get to there, and then another six, so right up to it. And what's the coherency for these guys? Coherency on all units is going to be within three inches of the sergeant, which is uh, this guy here with the pistol. Cool. All right, now that we're ready to shoot, I just want to walk through what it would be like to do a normal shooting action. Uh, remember, everything in this game is opposed rolling, so it would be my skill versus your evasion. So I have four versus your five. When we do out that math, since you have more than me, it's going to be a five plus for me to hit. Okay, and because you're wildfiring, though, you hit on a fixed value. Yes, so when you're wildfiring, you only hit on sixes. Gotcha, regardless of your skill on the other one. Now we need to determine how many shots are going to be fired. We check the range on this. All the guys are currently in range. And what that means is that each one of the troopers that does have a normal... Uh, Assault rifle? Yeah. Normal weapon is going to fire two shots. So we have six shots here. And then the grenade launcher gets a standard one shot plus however many can fit under this template. There is no scattering, so it's just going to be an additional four. I'll show you how many shots you get. Cool. So now these are just hit on sixes. Yep. That first salvo of shots, no hits. Yep. And I just grabbed because that does not affect wildfire. So for just uh, educational purposes, we're going to pretend that we got one hit here from the grenade launcher. Uh, and what that is to figure out if I've actually hurt the Firefly Recon Drone, is that we look at my gun's penetration value, which will be a three. And then with the three, we compare it directly to your AV. So I would need a uh, four to, uh, no, three actually, three, because I'm better, but not twice. So if I roll there, and let's just pretend it's a four, <laughs> um, what would end up happening is it would do uh, the one damage in its profile, which would ma max your uh, one mass and therefore cause one uh, fortitude point killing one of those models. So for every mass you have, it's into that damage. You take a wound basically based on the, the, amount, of the amount of penetrations you take. Cool. So if, let's say I was mass four, what would happen? Uh, you would just take a singular... Uh, f actually, no, nothing would happen. Right, so you'd yeah. have to get damage up to mass yeah. four to do a single point. To do a single point of damage. Got it. We're going to go ahead and place the last marker there that shows that that unit's been activated. Uh, I'm passing it off to Ash now. As he's the non-priority player, he has the option to activate one unit to completion and then hand the turn back over to me, or to activate a secondary unit after he furnishes, finishes his first unit. So it's over to me, I'm going to activate my Hunter Class War Mech, and I'm going to give him a hold and fire action, because that seems like a good thing to do when you're staring at an Archangel. So he's not going to move. And he's going to take his plus one to hit. Um, and he's got all kinds of tons of guns. So he's got a, uh, a uh, big auto cannon and some rocket pods. Now I can pre-measure everything. Um, I don't know if we mentioned that earlier. And that means I know I'm within range of all my guns here, 30 or 32 inches. So my maglock chain gun is a 36 inch range. It rolls three dice to hit. It has a penetration of five, does two damage per hit done, and has the rule burst six plus and heavy. So heavy means if I move, I only do wildfire shots, and burst six plus means every six I roll to hit counts as two hits, which is pretty cool. Now I also have a strike missile pod with a 30 inch range, does one shot, sorry not strike, a cluster missile pod, uh, 30 inch range, one shot, but it does a blast template as well, small blast, so um, I get an additional hit if I target one guy. Penetration to three, one damage, also heavy, so wildfire if I moved, and guided, but I don't have any kind of uh, targeting stuff up just right now. Also has the burst sex plus rule, so every hit is two hits. So I'm going to target the Archangel there, because he's dangerous, <laughs> and that means um, I will be shooting through those trees, which will provide some cover. So trees are classified as light cover, and that means that um, basically if I shoot through it into the Angel over there, he'll get to ignore 
a number of hits equal to the cover value. So in this case, it'd be one. So one of the hits that I do will be ignored. So it, the small blast simply hits him once. So I got two dice here for my cluster pod. Uh, my other gun, the flat cannon, only has an 18 inch range, so it doesn't shoot. And my maglock uh, chain gun has three dice as well. So what is my, uh, sorry, my skill is four. What is your evasion? My evasion is three. Oh, so I'm hitting on threes here. Uh, I'm plus one though, because I did hold and fire. So I'm hitting on twos. So I actually have a second cluster missile pod too, giving me four dice because I'll put two templates down. So I actually get a total of seven dice here. Um, now the reason I can fire three guns is large and behemoth models can fire a number of weapons equal to their fortitude. My fortitude is three. So I get to roll all these dice. Six has turned into two hits uh, and I'm hitting on twos right now because I held and fired. So there is one, two, three hits. And then one, two, three hits from the pod. Now you get to choose, I think, which one gets ignored. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and ignore the pod. Okay. So a mature angel has an AV, an armor value of five, three. Five is his front facing arc and his rear arc is actually weaker for three. So that means that I will be wounding uh, on a four better. I have a penetration, or sorry, yeah, penetration of five on the chain gun. Um, and it had three hits, so fours are better. We'll get damage through. There is two of them. Uh, and then the missile pod is a three, uh, and it is, again, five here, so it'll be on not quite double, uh, and that means a five plus for damage, so one. So you've taken one from the missile pod and two from the chain gun. So with damage two on the, uh, the chain gun, that's gonna apply four damage to its fortitude of three, Sorry, so it's mass of four, uh, and it'll take one damage from that. With only one damage from the uh, missile pod, and only do an additional one, so no other fortitude damage. So you're basically taking one wound here. So now for every point of fortitude you uh, basically cause in damage from around a shooting, you will cause a stress token. Um, you would also cause stress tokens, uh, which are psychological stress tokens for the ones ignored by cover, just people keeping their heads down. But because he's a behemoth, he's fearless, and that means he doesn't take them from the cover ones. He only takes damage ones, and that means he's now got a stress token on him, which will make him hard to activate later in the turn. That War Max now activated. Of course, he didn't need to roll activate because he has no stress tokens. And I can choose to activate a second one. I'm actually going to. I'm going to activate this second... Um, oh, I don't want to activate him. Now we're going to activate the Scarecrow. We'll see what he can do. And he's going to get an advance order. All right, so Mr. Scarecrow gets an advance of five inches. He's going to walk up to here. Uh, and then he's going to take a shot with his rail rifle into the angel. Ah, uh, actually into the little snipery dude, or little assassin -y guy. So his rail rifle has a 36 inch range, or 60 um, normally. Now it drops down that extra 24 inches long range. If there's a low visibility condition, like we're playing at night or something like that, it would drop down. For the game, for the purposes here, I can shoot basically the whole table, it doesn't really matter. I have two shots, so two dice. Penetration of five, sniper four plus. Now sniper gives me a whole host of rules. If I roll a four better to hit, it means that that damage is chosen by me. The model isn't chosen by uh, Travis, who it's gonna go on to. It gets plus one damage, so it becomes damage three instead of damage two, and it gets applied before any other hits are applied. So it's it's basically precision shooting in 40K. So what is your evasion with that guy? My Probably pretty good. is five. My skill is three six. So now the six is actually a bot protocol. I'd have to activate that by activating a bot handler and having him spend a command point to get me to do it. So I'm only three against your five, which means I need a five plus here to hit you. But either of these fives will become sniper. So let's see if they happen. There's a, doesn't even add up to five. So nothing for him and he's activated. So it's back over to Travis now. So it goes back over to Travis. I'm gonna activate these Tempest elites. They're gonna do an advance and fire. So they're gonna move to here. And they've got grenade launchers too. Yep. Which means they're gonna pile on the hits here. So their pulse cannons get three shots each, which means you get 12 dice. Now yep. they are heavy though, so you're always wide firing or wild firing if you move. Yep, so we're gonna wild fire into this group here. Okay, so sixes. Well, there's three. Yep. So for a um, unit like this with mixed armor values, you take the most common. So the most common armor value is three. They're both the same basically. And that means that your penetration of five is better than my armor value. So on threes, you'll do some damage. Two. So two damage, we have mass of one, and I'll destroy two drones. Now I get to pick which ones. So I'm gonna pick you and you. All right, so you take half the number of fortitude you did in damage and tokens, which is one extra one, so we go to two. Plus, this was the, nom the primary target, and it's not fearless. It's an additional one to go up to three. So there's three stress tokens on, or sorry, stress tokens on now, yeah. They're now activated. 
So I'm going to nominate my Firefly Recon Drones, and they have a rule called Mobile and Hover. And Mobile means that I can dash, so move twice up to 16 inches, and shoot as if I'm moving normally. Um, and Hover means I don't have to try and like climb terrain, I can just measure the vertical movement and move up that high. Uh, so what we're going to do with them is move 16, so that's going to be 6, 8 up to here, plus 3 gives us uh, 11. Uh, and then lots of room to basically just get on top of this thing with their little laser guns and start painting stuff. And that of course is with the dash order. So with four shots each, I'm gonna get 16 shots um, and they have the paint five plus roll. So five plus, um, I'll get to do uh, paint tokens on guys as well. So we're gonna shoot those Karists over there. My skill is three, what's their evasion? Uh, the Karist Trooper evasion is gonna be three as well. So fours I'll be hitting on. There's 16 hitting on fours and that's gonna be a lot. So picking up my ones, twos and threes. You are in the open, uh, which means I have hit you a grand total of 5, 10, 12 times. Only penetration 1 though, so I'm wounding on 6s here because your armor 4. So 6s to wound, do some damage, but I get 3 of them, uh, and they are damage 1, which means that they will go through and do, I think your fortitude is 1? My fortitude is 1, my so mass, mass is, is two. 2. Okay, so 3, I'll do 1 for 1 damage there, yep. 1 fortitude, and that means one guy's going to die of your yep. choice. No, not them, the ones up there. Oh, these guys. Yeah, inactivated guys. And that's going to mean that you take 2 tokens, 1 for being uh, having a damage done to you, plus 1 for the psych token. It's now activated. I will do a second activation, activate this Hunter Class War Mech, and he is going to do a hold action as well and light up this unit. So my two cluster pods will inflict 10 hits on them, or 10 shots rather. I've got three for my machine gun, um, sorry, my, my suppressor machine gun, and three for my maglock chain gun as well. So green will be the pro, uh, pods, the chain rifle, or the maglock chain gun will be the white, and the red will be the suppressor dual machine gun. Now the greens and um, the reds will have burst six plus, the other ones are on fives. So, I got, uh, sorry, I should actually compare what I need to roll here. Uh, what is the defense on those guys, the evasion on those guys it's again? Three. Uh, and I have a skill of four, so I'm hitting on threes. So the ones and twos are gonna go away completely, which means that the chain gun just totally missed. Uh, this is gonna turn into two hits, and then that's it. So that's going to be this many hits from the pod, this many hits from the suppressor. The pod, he is uh, armor four against my damage of three. So we got damage of three, um, penetration of three. I think fives to do any damage here, cause penetrates. There is five penetrates from that. And then the other one, which is the suppressor is four. So it's fours and they will both hit. And that means a grand total of, uh, it looks like seven. So it's seven damage total. You can start applying it however you like. Sure. So the, the mass is two on these. Yep. So it's gonna be three dudes, just gonna die. And we'll kill the grenade launcher. Okay. Uh, he's three stress tokens because he's taken three casualties halved plus one for the psychological one from coming under fire. Yep. Probably discarded some hits there too actually because I was actually um, holding and firing so he's getting plus one to hit but I don't think it would have changed much. All right, so it's back over to you. So you've got uh, these fellas, yep. the Minos. Uh, Minnows and the Angel left. Yes. Oh, sorry, and your two assassins. And my two assassins. I think I'm going to go ahead and activate the Minnows. Okay, the Minnows are going to go? Yep. Okay, and what kind of order are they going to get? They are going to get a double move, so a dash. dash. Okay, and they're mostly, they shoot at all or are they mostly combat -y? They do have a shoot. Uh, it's not very good, though. Okay. So they're going to move 16. Okay, and measure any vertical movement you want to do, too. Yep. So, go to here. It's going to be seven. Plus probably three to get up. Yep. And so ten, and then you got six more. Yep. So we'll end up right around right there. there. Okay, this goes in behind. So taking some shots into the uh, dragon, Fire. or sorry, the, what is it, fireflies over yep. here. I have 18 inch range, and they have two shots each. Yep. So I'm going to need uh, three more dice. Okay. And I have an evasion of five. Yep. And you have a shoot skill of, or skill of? Three. So fives to hit, and I get to discount the first hit because I am in light cover. So that'll be three, down to two it looks like. Yep. Uh, the burst on this would make this, or the explosion on this would make this two hits. Okay, so it's but, uh, four. Yeah, so 
One still get discarded. Yeah, so it's down to three again. Yep. Uh, and now what is the penetration? The penetration on this is a three. Armor value of two, so threes to do any damage. Penetrations, you get two penetrations, mass of one, so that'll destroy two of these fireflies. So the fireflies will take two stress tokens, one for the halved amount of fortitude they took, plus one for coming under fire for the psych token, and these guys are activated. So I'm gonna activate the Epirian contractors, and first things first, they are attached to the journeyman um, engineer, the bot handler rather. So he's gonna spend some command tokens. He's gonna spend one of his command tokens to activate the bot protocol on him for marksman. Also, I'm gonna do to scrape off one of the stress tokens on these guys to be down to two. They're gonna get an advance order with a movement of seven. So they're gonna go six and one, just head over here and take some shots into these Karist Heavy Infantry. So my Journeyman has a Maglock Dominator Pistol with two shots, penetration four and damage two, 24 inch range. Um, and that means with his skill of four, what's your evasion on these Heavy Infantry? Uh, the evasion on the Heavy Infantry is a little bit lower. They have a two. So he's gonna be hitting on th twos. Now the actual contractors have two shot Maglock Assault Rifles for six more dice. The white dice are hitting on threes with the Assault Rifles. The green dice are the pistols hitting on twos. And that's going to be five hits from Assault Rifles and three hits from Dominator Pistols. They are AV5 with a damage of, or sorry, a penetration of four on the pistol. So we're hitting on fives here. Nothing at all. And then these are going to be damage two, sorry, four rather. Oh, three, I can't even do math. <laughs> Against fives, so you need fives as well, because not double. So there's one at damage one. All right, and I have mass two. So no, no casualties, but you do take a token. You take a stress token for coming under fire. He's activated out. And then we're gonna do a secondary activation and activate the Scarecrow up here, and he's gonna try and take some shots on your Angel. The Scarecrow's gonna activate, he's gonna get a hold in fire order, and he's gonna try and shoot the Assassin down there. Um, so that means that his two shots with his rail rifle, uh, he's got his Marksman bot thing up, so he is currently skill six. What is your defense or your evasion? Uh, my evasion's five. Evasion five, so threes, plus one for twos because of his hold in fire. So hitting on twos, and four plus will be Sniper. Uh, so they both hit, one becomes Sniper, which means it gets plus one damage. The sniper one gets applied first, damage five against your three armor, so that'll be a two plus to penetrate, sorry, a three plus to penetrate, and it doesn't. And the one that wasn't Sniper, same thing, does penetrate, and it is damage two. So what is your fortitude? Uh, two. So we right. will take one... Your mass ray is two, so you'll take one fortitude. Yep. So he's got two um, and a wound on him, basically, or a fortitude on him, and I have activated my Scarecrow. So it's back over to you. I'm gonna go ahead and activate this assassin. Um, he is going to double move from Wildfire. Okay, move 14, because yep. his move is seven. So he's gonna go six, and then he's gonna go up this ladder, three. So nine. And he's got five more inches, so he's probably just gonna skirt. Head over uh, the ladder. Skirt over there. Probably right there, end up. Like so. He's hiding from the fireflies, his wildfire's not gonna matter because he's got no range on the mech. I'm gonna activate these fellas right here. Now they have to make a motivation roll because unlike the rest of my troops, they currently have markers on them. Now they have a willpower of three and two markers. So in the opposed test, they need to roll a three or better and they activate. They're gonna take a hold and fire action and shoot some machine guns into this Karis Heavy Infantry. So the controller has a Dominator uh, Maglock pistol and then there's eight shots from machine guns, cutter and light machine guns from the drones. Now the drones have a shoot value of f uh, three? Yep, skill of three, and the apprentice has a four. And what is the evasion on those uh, heavy infantry? Two. Two, okay, so we're hitting on threes and twos with the white dice here. So threes are the green ones, twos are the white ones. Uh, and sixes are explosions, because they burst. So that's gonna be four hits right there. Five, six, seven and then two from there. All right, those twos will also hit because I forgot I was um, holding and firing. Armor five against my penetration of four for the machine gun, so fives are better to do any damage here. And that'll just be one damage, so that's just gonna get shrugged. Dominator is damage four as well, so fives, sorry, a penetration four against armor five, so they need fives to do any damage. One, and that's damage two. All right, they have um, so one wound. Okay, so one guy's wounded. So one wound, and then that will be two more um, suppression tokens yep. because he took a fortitude, halved to still one, and he came under fire. I'll put them at three. Now in the end phase, you haven't seen us do this before, but you actually shake off suppression tokens. You get D3 removed at the end of your activation, so that's two. So these are He's activated, so it's over to you. So the Karis are gonna activate. All right. Uh, I have a willpower of six. 
And two tokens, so two it's tokens. a three plus. It's going to be a two plus. Oh, double, that's right, so two plus. Yep, so they're they good. They do activate, yep. And they are going to do a... Let me do a quick pre-measure, because you're allowed to do that in this game. Uh, it's like you're with an 18 with some of them. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. And in this game, if uh, one member of your squad is in range with his gun, the rest with the same profile are on range. Cool. So, we're going to do some quick math. So that's going to be six shots with the carbines. Yep, and that's going to be it, because he's out of range, and he doesn't have a gun. We have an evade of five. What's your skill? Uh, my skill is four. All right, so hitting on fives. Oh, you're holding though. Yep, so actually hitting on fours. Yep. So just one. Okay. And what is your penetration? Uh, you have a cover, so we're going to ignore that. Oh, that's right. First one gets ignored, but I will take the psychological stress yes. token. Two, actually, for being the primary target, and also for uh, taking one ignored from cover, because the ignored wounds uh, still count for being suppressed. He's going to shake off D3 at the end. Oh, and that'll be three. all, so yeah. the rest of them are gone, and you're activated. I can activate my relay. He's just going to advance and go hide behind this rock again. What about you? You've got your angel and your assassin. Left. All right, I'm going to activate the uh, the assassin, who has a willpower of four, two tokens. Yep, so twos, because you're doubling. We're so good. He's fine. And he's going to double move. Worth noting, if you fail that roll, you automatically take the dig in action. He's just going to run up behind the wall here. Yep. And wildfire, but there's no one in range. So, when you go to activate an angel, what you need to do is first pass its willpower test. So it has, uh, what is one token? So two plus? Yep. Whoa! Oh, he, oh, fails. he fails! He's so gonna dig in. He's gonna dig in instead. So dig in basically makes you pinned, and if you're pinned, you can only use certain things. But because he's a behemoth and fearless, he just basically gets to do the dig in action without all the drawbacks. Yes. So what he's going to do is just dig in, meaning he can make a single movement and then wildfire. So his single movement is going to be to move his six inches up, bringing his token and his wound. And what form is he going to take? He is going to take the winged form. And this means that he can, uh, f in the future turns, uh, move twice as far, getting both mobile and hover. Gotcha. What beams are you going to shoot at? I got sable beams with 18 inch range, and it looks like they are going to... End up having to shoot these guys because okay. I can still hit the robot. Over sure can. You can fire both his guns because he's a behemoth and he's got a fortitude of more than two. Yep. And that means hitting on sixes because wildfire. Yep. So he's gonna fire his six shots and one. get one. And he has a pen of five. Okay. Armor value of three. So it's three plus. Yep. Does the damage. That'll do it. Mass one. All right. And a damage of two. Okay. So that's gonna destroy this fellow right here. And I'll take two uh, blasts for coming under fire and the destroyed unit. And actually, before we stop, just realize that he also has explosive on that six. So okay. another one of those should have been a hit. Okay, so another uh, one wound. Three, and that'll do it too. That's going to kill you the drone. Yep. Still two uh, tokens here because you have the number of fortitude you take plus one for coming under fire. And he's done. Yep. I think that ends the turn. Well, I got to do a D3 here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, remove D3 blast. So two. Two. And, two and he'll have zero. one left. Or one left. That's right. I thought that was only a one. So yeah, they're all gone. So at the end of the round, we're going to move on to round two, but first we do VP scoring. So Travis has units within 12 of the middle, and that gives him three VPs. He also didn't use his tertiary, his supply cache this turn, for an additional one. So that's going to give him four total. Now, I do not have any units within uh, the center, but I didn't use my bot to provide a command token, so I'm going to get one from that. So I'm at one, he's at four, and we go on to round two. We'll clear off all the activated tokens and roll for initiative. Command point phase, any unused command points get cleared off, and then we recoup the turn number plus our command value. So my journeyman will get three. With them recouped, we're going to roll for initiative. So he goes first on turn two. Four, and you get a five, five so you're going to get to go first. So I'm going to activate my Tempest Elites to start. They have a willpower of four and currently three tokens. So I require a... Three plus. Three plus. Nope. nope. I'm failing with a two. Two. All right. So they're going to dig in. Digging in. Uh... So with dig in, they have the choice of either standing still and shooting normally or moving and wild firing. So I think we're going to go ahead and just fire at the closest thing, okay. which is going to be this guy. So it's normal shots. Twelve dice. Yep. Uh, that's the poor contractor in charge of those spider drones. He's not doing so well, but he is evade four. All right, and I'm skill five. So threes. 
Ones and twos go away. And do you have any explodings for the sixes? Uh, I have one. So two. Is are they burst? Uh, explosives actually on the penetration roll, so those sixes don't mean anything. Yep. Uh, and then I am armor three. Yep. Versus your penetration of my penetration is so threes and sixes will become uh, even better. Yeah, they'll get exploded. damage too. Yeah. So two damage extra, and then all the ones and twos go away. And that's more than enough damage to just vaporize me. And with that, they're activated. It goes over to me. Now I still have the choice of activating two units because I got to roll D3. Well, that's right. Enough, so. Is it two D3? Just one D3. Just one D3. I thought because you were pit, you're digged in, you'd actually get an extra. Didn't matter there, but he would have gotten an extra D3 from the dig in because you get D3 normally just for activating. You get an extra D3 when you dig in. We're gonna activate the boss, and the boss gonna go, um, and then he is going to first spend a command token to put a bot protocol on him. And then another one to put a bot protocol on him. Third one's gonna put a bot protocol on this guy. And then we're going to dash. So I'm gonna dash 14, so six and one. And six and one will put me behind here. And these guys are gonna wildfire into your angel. So these guys are gonna fire, actually not into the angel, but over here. I'm gonna use my grenade launcher, my underslung grenade launcher, uh, for six dice. And then I've got four more dice from assault rifles. It'll be the red dice. And then the pistol has four dice as well. So the defense on those Karist elites is... Uh, it is... Tempest elite, sorry. Two. Two, okay. Range. So I'm double with the uh, green dice, so I'll be hitting on twos. Sorry, I'm always hitting on sixes, I'm wild firing. So it doesn't even matter, just hitting on sixes. And I hit you once, and that's with the assault rifle, and it is damage three against your armor five, it can't do any damage. It does do damage, but... It uh, is not enough to do any damage to you because you're fortitude two, yep. and that means you will take one suppression token. And so he is done this unit. Uh, and then we're gonna activate this warbot, or this warbot. We're gonna activate this warbot, and he's gonna use his Osimo protocol. No, we'll do this one. Um, and he's gonna do an, uh, he, using his uh, target lock protocol. Uh, it gets him a move plus. He gets to count as being. Uh, on hold, so he gets to move, and then still shoot at plus one. Shooting the minnows of defense five, I believe. Yes, sir. So I'm hitting them on fives with all my guns. So the double launchers are gonna get 10 dice, uh, because that's five per. Um, we'll just do them first. So with plus one to hit, um, I will hit on fours here with these 10 dice. That's going to be this many, you're in cover. So I'm gonna drop one of these down to four. Number two with a penetration of three will be a three plus to do some damage. That's gonna be two points of damage, and I think they have fortitude one each. Uh, yep. They so, have two gone. Yeah, mass of two, fortitude one. Oh, mass two. Okay, so, so it's only one then. Yep. Yeah. So the suppressor dual machine gun with a burst of three, sorry, um, has the burst five plus rule and three shots. So it's going to hit, well, not at all, hits on fours. And the auto, sorry, the maglock chain gun has three shots, burst six. Uh, and hits twice, no burst. It is, however, damage two and pen five, so I think it wounds on twos. Yep. Goes through twice. And that'll pop two Pop more. two guys. Oh. That's four suppression tokens, and I'm activated. Okay, this Shadow Walker is going to activate, and he is going to charge your drums. All right, so I can try and uh, shoot you when you come in, but I have to pass a motivation test, and my current willpower is three. I have four markers on me, so on a five, six, I actually get to do this. And I do, with a six. So now you double your um, EBS, your evade, which makes you evade 10. And I'm only skill three, so that means I'm hitting you on fives of my shots. I'm gonna use the drone glass laser systems, um, which are shoot with four shots each. So I control eight dice here looking for fives. So fives and sixes, we're gonna get three of them. And what is your armor? My armor is three. Okay, so I need fives and sixes to do any damage. And there's one, damage one. All right, I have a mass of two. So that's gonna shrug it. You got a marker, of course, but then you go in. Yep. I'm gonna attack my cyborg blade, uh, and we do close quarters combat, uh, just me hitting him. It's basically just shooting. Yeah, it's shooting, but touching. So uh, with your blade, you get uh, a rate of fire of dash, and that means that you add your fortitude, your mass, and your EVS together. And then you have that running up, and that's your number of attacks, yeah? Yep. So you've got a total of nine, which gives you five attacks to your dagger, which is better than two with your pistol, which is the other option to fight with. Absolutely. And I am defense, or EBS, five. Okay. And I am going skill. to be skill six. 
So threes. I also have uh, explosion on sixes. So uh, that's on wound rolls. So that's on damage rolls. Plus oh, one damage. You're right. Yep. So there's four hits, and then it's uh, armor value two. Your strength Ten, five. Five. <laughs> so twos. Uh, uh, and there's an additional there's damage. So that one's damage two. Not that it matters because I'm yep. just four two one for everybody. So four damage is going to wipe with the squad. End of the round. He's going to lose D three blast markers. Could lose one, one, which is the only one I got. Activated. So now you could activate someone else if you want, because it is no longer your first activation. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and activate the Shadow Walker. Okay. And the building over here. Sounds good. He has a willpower of four and two blast markers, so he is going to need a two plus. He's good. Gets it. All right. I'm going to try and reaction fire. Um, I'll do it automatically because I have no blast markers. So I have a skill of four, and you have an EVS of ten right now, doubled. So with my crazy double pistols, I'm gonna need fives, and get two. They're damage four. What is your armor? Armor is a uh, heavy three. So threes. Uh, do two damage. Yeah, he's dead. Gets murdered on the way in. So we're gonna activate this war bot, and he's gonna activate his uh, bot protocol, so he can move and still count as stationary for holding his ground. and get plus one to shoot. He's gonna move up to here. So he can see your angel in the open. So we're gonna start off by firing the flat cannon. It gets three shots. Uh, your defense is uh, my defense three, if I remember correct. Yep. So hang on twos, plus one for the locked on. It's gonna hit twice. Uh, it is five penetration against your armor of armor is five. So fours. Nothing. Our chain gun's gonna do it. It has burst six plus. So again on twos. And sixes would have exploded, but they did not. Uh, and then it's damage five as well. So penetration five against armor five. No wounds. Fire missile pod's gonna go. Um, now it's going to try and shoot the angel, I guess. So two. Um, it can only shoot one of them because it can only shoot three guns. I think I got that wrong with the other hunter warmack earlier. Uh, and it's a cluster missile pod. So hitting on twos. And then it's damage three, sorry, penetration three against armor of five. So fives does one damage, uh, but it's only damage one, and that will just put a blast marker on you. Yep. So you'll take two. Uh, you're fearless, actually, so you ignore the one from coming under fire. You just take one from the... No. No, I take two. You take two, that's right. Yeah, no, he didn't actually take... He took damage, but he didn't take damage. I think the, the wording there is probably a little bit obscure, because he didn't take enough damage for him to lose a fortitude. Um, it's not actually damage yet, it's just he took damage from the attack. He's done, uh, and then we are going to activate the Scarecrow as our second activation, and he's going to try and shoot the Angel as well. He's not actually going to shoot the Angel, he's going to try and finish off this Karis Assassin up here. So he's going to hit on threes, uh, he's going to take the order to stand still, so he's going to hit on twos, so hold. Um, and that means with his marksmanship ability from his bot protocol, um, he becomes skill six against evasion five with plus one to hit. So twos. Both hit. Five against armor three. It's going to do damage on threes and four pluses will do double damage. Uh, does, so that's going to be six damage. I think he's going to be dead. Vaporized. So going to activate? Yep, I'm going to activate the angel. He has uh, one token on him and three willpower. So, so he's two plus. Two plus. He's, he's good. And that means he's going to go charge your group over there. Uh oh, and they've already done a uh, reaction fire, so they can't do it again. And we're within range. Already check that. Whoop, and CQC in this is six inches. So if you're in six inches, basically, you're considered to be engaged in CQC. Now, because he's in mobility form, he's using his Cybel Maw to attack right now. He's got five attacks because his mass plus fortitude plus um, his EVS is 10. And you'll be hitting on fives because your skill is three against my evade of four plus. So there's two hits, three hits. Three hits. And mass is your damage or your uh, penetration value. I right? had an explosion six plus on melee. Okay, so, so your rolls for damage will be plus one damage yep. if you roll sixes. And you are mass four against my armor on the regular contractor engineers of uh, three. So threes here, sixes become plus one damage. So there's one wound and it becomes three damage. With a mass of two, that's going to blow up uh, one of these guys. We'll take the guy with just a regular assault rifle. So I'm going to take four blast here, two because of your fearsome rule, one from the casualty and one from being the primary target. So I got four blast markers on me now. I'm gonna make a motivation test now to fight back, otherwise I'm going to fall back. I'll use the willpower of four for my journeyman. I have four tokens, so on a four plus I'm good. I'm good, I get to fight back. Pistols, so use my dominator pistols on him. Four shots. Defense three, the dominator pistol is going to hit on threes because it is a pistol weapon, it's gonna hit twice. It's four against armor five, so fives to do damage, and none at all. The two guys with their pistols, they get two shots each, uh, with a skill of three, they hit on fours. 
It's gonna be three hits and then damage of three. They're gonna wound on fives, so penetrate on fives. That is none. He's now activated and you have the choice of activating another unit if you wanna try and pull another motivation test. You've got your uh, two units of Karis troops there and then under this bridge and you've also got the remaining little fly guy here. I'm gonna use this uh, this group right here. Okay. And they have a willpower of six. They auto pass because yep. they don't have any uh, issues. Last markers, yep. So yep. what order are they getting? They are going to do a move and shoot. Okay. So just advance. Yep. So they can only move four inches because they got a straggler with them. This guy. So they've advanced. Yep. Did he want to give any tokens to anybody for any reason? Uh, no. He's 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 okay with what he's doing. Does my way to shrug off any blast yep. markers? No. You're fine. No. So we're still in range of your hunter class. Okay. And that means uh, three guns are coming at you, two shots each. EDS2 against skill of four, you're hitting on twos. Easy to hit. It's gonna be Oops. four of them. Still gonna miss twice. And then it is arm five in the front arc. Yeah, I believe I am pen two. Explosive six plus means that sixes will become damage two and he needs fives here to do any damage. Yep. I'm I am pen four. Whoa, so there's damage two, yep. um, and it penetrates, and that means that it will not quite get through my mass of three. He needs at least two there, uh, so it doesn't make damage, but it will put a uh, commander fire token. It's like a stress token. Over to me, I'm gonna activate this uh, hunter class, not hunter class, um, scarecrow class mech, and it is going to, I guess, charge? Actually, I'm just gonna give him the hold action. Um, that's gonna give him plus one to hit. And he's got advanced tracking as a special skill. So he can actually fire his rail gun, um, which is technically a sniper weapon, which should miss over long range, or sorry, in short range, but he can fire it normally into the Karist Angel. So he has two shots with that thing. Um, it's skill three, so it's gonna be hitting on fours. And then four pluses are sniper. So it gets one on a six sniper, so it's plus one damage. Uh, and also gets applied first, yada yada. There's only one model on the thing. Um, and it is damage five. I need a four to do any damage here. And I do, but it's only damage grand total of three. He'll shrug that damage because he's mass four, but it will put another blast marker on him for two now. He's activated. Um, I have one last thing to activate, which is my little bots, but I'm not going to because I want the VP. I have five to activate the minnow. Yep. And he gets a I one. So he's going to dig in. So, so he dig. can make a move if he wants yep. and be pinned. So his movement is eight. And then uh, wildfire. So you might as well just move somewhere where I can't see you. Yeah. Might as well try to go ahead. Get in there? Yep. And he has to remove 2d3 blasts. Yep. And he can wildfire as well if he wants. So 2d3 blasts come off. Yep. One Easy and... One. No, no, it's 2d3 because you're pinned. Oh, yep. That's going to be four, so they're all gone. Last single man down there, yep. hiding with himself. He can try and get motivated. He's got one blast. So he just needs two. That's a three blast, right? Oh, that is a three blast, yeah. Three blast. So he's got willpower uh, three, so four he's getting a four. Makes he's it good. Uh, he is going to just move further onto this crate. Oh, you're carrying it? Yep. Okay. Just going to stand there. Next. He is. Uh, he still has a carbine, even though he's he a sergeant model. Uh, he's going to try to fire into this group all the way over here. All right, shooting the contractors. So two shots into them. Now they are minus one hit right now because they double moved. That makes them fast moving. So you will hit them their defense four with your skill of three. So six is to hit. Oh, no, it's skill four. Skill four, so five to hit. Five to hit. One. One. And the pen is four. On the three. It's going to wound. Yep. And damage. It has uh, only one damage. So it's going to get shrugged off, and they're going to go to an additional blast marker. D3 blast markers at the end, and be the last unit activated. So three come off, and he is free. And clean. VPs for the end of round two. I got three for having a unit within 12 in the middle. I also got meat grinder. I destroyed two units, so one and one. That puts me at six. You got three for holding the middle, and one and one for the two uh, units you finished off, which are my fireflies and my... Uh, little buggy bots. Sorry, we didn't get two from the meat grinder. We actually both got additional ones from not spending a supply cash token and my uplink not being used. So it's the same number, um, but meat grinder, you can only score one per turn no matter how many units you destroy. So we're going to turn three out of five we discovered the game goes to, um, and we'll remove our activation tokens and roll for initiative. So we're going to roll for initiative, then declare command, or replenish our command points, and then declare any reinforcements. I got a six. Looks like I won. So I have to declare any reinforcements first. Um, after I generate my four command points, because it's turn three plus one for my command ability. I will try and bring these guys back in, little grasshopper guys. Would you like to bring back in? 
Bring a shadow walker if I can. All right. So we make two piles, uh, which are basically the number of command points we want to do. What we'll do is we'll hide dice and then reveal them. Yeah. So on the right will be the ones I'm bidding to bring in my own guys, and the left will be how many I'm bidding to try and stop him. All right. So your bid. Yep. So for my own, I bid three. Yep. And to stop yours, I bid one. Okay. You stop mine because I only bid one as well. So yours comes in, mine doesn't. Three command points left, and you've got none. none. Assassin basically will just be a, a unit to the side, and when he yep. wants to activate, he can walk on any of your friendly table edges. Exactly. So this long edge, or up to halfway yep. on this edge. When I get to activate a unit, I kind of want to activate the boss, but I've got six command tokens, or sorry, four um, tokens on me, which means it's a four plus for me to do anything here. I'm actually going to spend a command token now to actually pull off a blast marker here, and that's going to bring me down to three, which means I'll, I'll be motivated on a three plus instead of a four plus, which is kind of safer. Then I'm going to try and activate them, and I'm going to give them a advance order. Actually, sorry, I'll use other command tokens too, but I have to do my order first. It's going to go off with a five. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, auto fire, sorry, bot, bot protocol and bot protocol on both these bots. I get to make a move, which I will do seven inches away. There's no being locked in combat here. So we're just gonna straight up walk away and head over here and try and gun down the last Karis guy over there. We're actually gonna take all of our shots now into the Angel. We're outside of six, so we can use other guns, but I will still use my Dominator pistols on him. Uh, you are defense three. Yep. So I'm hitting on threes here. And that'll hit four times. Uh, four is the penetration against your armor of five. So I will damage you now on fives. There's one, damage two. That's assault rifle time. Um, we've also got a grenade launcher, which we could use choke grenades on, which I think we will do because we get extra dice that way. So we use the grenade launcher for three, uh, and we are shoot of, or sorry, skill of with those guys. Four, I believe? Nope, three. So fours to hit. Nothing. And then the assault rifle on the other guy, fours to hit. There's one hit. Uh, and. We do damage you, three against five, not double. Okay. So that's gonna be one more damage. As of four, that's no damage, but you do take another token from being the primary target. Now, because I got to go first, I can't actually activate twice in a row, but you can, because you're the second player this turn, so you get to go first, right. or go now. Yep, so first thing I'm gonna do is activate this group, okay. and they auto pass, and they are going to move and fire. Sounds good. So their move is a four with the Kadar Nova, because he's slow. Yeah, he's not a fast man. And they move up to there. And who are they shooting at? Yep, they're going to shoot at your squad leader. All right. So you'll have three guys with assault rifles. Yep, so that's uh, going to be six shots. Yep, we're evasion four against your skill of... Four. So fours. And that looks like four hits. Now these ones have the high damage, so yep. on a six they do damage two. Woo, okay. So that's going to be a total of three dead guys. Because uh, I'll take care of the first two squatties, the two sixes, and then there's going to be two more damage against the contractor engineer bot handler, and he has a mass of two, so he'll take a damage. Two pistol shots from the uh, rad gun guy, and he will also hit on fours. And nope. Miss. All right, so you take two casualties, so that's a blast marker plus primary target for another one. And it puts us at, it looks like, five. I actually shouldn't have these three because at the end of my activation, I would have lost them. So I'm actually at two now. I'm going to activate the Karist Angel. He needs a four plus because of all his tokens. Nope. He does not. So he's going to have to either dig in, um, and that means he can make a move or stand still. Uh, he'll be wild firing either way. Now, he does not become pinned, though, because he's fearless. Yeah. I'm going to use his, uh, his ability to shoot over at your HQ. Okay. You're and not going to move, so you're not going to be wild firing. It's going to be shooting normally. Yep, and he has two cyborg beams. Six shots at pen five damage two. So yep. I'm evade four, and you are skill. The skill level is three. three. So fives. One, two. Yep. And it's damage five. I am armor three. Yep. And explosive six plus. Uh oh. Uh, so two wounds. And damage is. Damage is. Two. Vaporized. I mean, D3 blast plus an extra D3 because you're pinned, but that's enough. All right, so now it's me. Uh, we're going to activate this Warbot, and he's going to move so he's not inside close range because he wants to shoot you. Moving back to here, so he's outside of six. Now, he does have the bot protocol up, so you can still count as holding even though he's moving and firing. The flat cannon gets three shots. Um, it is going to be skill six, so skill four, sorry, against your defensive three, so threes to hit. There's two hits, damage five against your armor of five. So fours to do any damage. There's one damage. 
at damage one. Our chain gun gets to go. Three shots on threes with burst six. So that's gonna turn into an extra hit, so three hits total. And then it's also damage five. Um, so on fours will do damage. Three, that's gonna be six damage, so seven. And one cluster missile pod. Um, and actually, sorry, these should be hitting on twos, I just realized, because I get the plus one to hit. Yep. Um, so with two hits from the cluster missile pod, two pluses will hit, one hits, and then it is burst six plus. That's not gonna be any extras, and needs to do a five to any damage, because it is strength three, sorry, penetration three. Nope, almost got to two. So I only did seven there, so it's enough to do one more damage. He's got one left. He's finished, and now we're going to activate, oh, let's say Mo, this guy right here. Uh, and he is going to activate on two plus, because he has one token. He does. He will get a move in fire order. Um, and of course, he also has his, uh, whatchamacallit, bot protocol up. He's just gonna move up to here, so you can see your angel in the open. And he'll get plus one to hit. Lock chain gun, burst six plus, hitting on twos because of his bot protocol. We'll hit twice, no sixes. Uh, needs a 40 unit damage, damage two. No damage at all. Uh oh, suppressor dual machine gun, burst five plus with three shots. Hitting on twos, all hit, and that turns into two extra hits, so it's five hits total. Also damage, so it's only damage four, so it needs five to unit damage. There's one damage so far total. So now one missile from the cluster pod. Uh, we'll get two dice on him, hitting on twos. Both hit, uh, the burst of six plus means it causes an additional hit. And if all of these are five plus, I will do a damage. All of them are five plus. No, two of them are though. Um, but that is still only three damage total, which is not actually doing anything. It's gonna put him a total of three blast markers, two from the previous round shooting, additional one here, and that will end his activation. Move D3, I only have one on me, so that's the last blast marker gone. So the Tempest Heavy Infantry are going to activate. Yep, they activate on a two plus. They yep. do. Uh, and we forgot actually, they had the uh, rule where they can actually move and fire their heavy weapons because of their power armor. So they do not need to snap fire even though they're carrying heavy weapons and they're moving. So 12 shots from these four heavy uh, Tempest Assault Troops into this one Scarecrow up high. Uh, EVS of two, he's hitting me on a two plus here with his uh, skill of five. And that means all but two are gonna hit. And then I am armor of three on a Scarecrow Sniper. Okay, and I'm 10 of five. All right, so you need threes. Um, um, and that's gonna be five. Uh, sixes are doubled, yep. Okay, and sixes are doubled, so with a mass of two, that just destroys him outright. Oh, Activated their last stress token, yeah. D3 come off, they only have one. Yeah. Auto passing his uh, initiative roll, this yep. fellow's just gonna walk on. Yep, so he's gonna he move. go 14 with a rush order. Just yeah, run here. straight up to the tree. Activate the scarecrow, he's just going to get a move order and move five and back up a bit so he's far enough away from the uh, Karis Angel that he's not engaged in close range. And he's gonna fire his sniper rifle into that lone Karis troop. So two shots from the rifle, evade three from that little Karis Enclave guy. Hitting on fours, one hit. Um, and then it is five against your armor of... Armor three. Okay, so threes, damage two. Oh. No, he's live. It's armor four, sorry, but regardless, it didn't wound. Activating, we've got the... Do the Angel Minnow. Yep. He is going to move down, I don't know how many inches that is. Looks like four. All right. So he's moving to eight, so he can move four inches afterwards. Yep. So he is gonna go hide over there. Just grab that uh, corner to give me breakthrough, and that activates him. Okay. And then I can activate my bot, but it's just gonna hide behind the wall again, <laughs> so I can earn a victory point from it being alive. Yep. And then lastly, I am going to activate him, and he is actually just gonna dig in. Yeah, he's gonna dig in. All right. Why not? Let's end the game, because we both have units within 12, so I'm gonna score three up to nine. Um, I did not destroy a unit this turn, so I'm not getting any from that. And I will go to 10 um, through my satellite uplink with command being alive still. Also holding the middle for three, which puts you at 12. You still hold your supply cache, and you managed to wipe out a unit from Meat Grinder, which puts you at 14. Difference of three. And to turn three, the Karis Enclave is gonna take the game uh, because they have a difference of at least three and they've hit 14. So there it is, Maelstrom's Edge. Lots of familiar territory there. Felt a little bit like epic with the initiative rolling, the order system. Um, the damage system actually felt Age of Sigmar-y. Yep. Which is funny because I'm pretty sure this game was written before Age of Sigmar. It was. <laughs>
<laughs> and then all the versus dice rolls are basically weapon skill comparisons from fantasy and 40k. So it's just you comparing a higher lower stat and then figuring out what your role needs to be. So if you if you've played any of those games, you can probably pick up this game super quickly. Um, I liked the three different scenarios. I liked the countdown clock on VPs because it did feel like a race against time and you couldn't muck about yeah. like camping and just slow, like slowly grinding away. Plus, killing your opponent only ever really gave you like one point per turn, whereas doing the objective, which was getting into the middle and getting things to be dangerous, was what was ramping up three per turn. So it, I think it's neat. I'm excited to see when there's a third faction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like right now it's two factions and they are they both kind of have like a rock and paper. Like there's guns on one side that are long ranged. There's melee stuff and lots of shots on the other side that are close ranged. What I'd like to see is a third faction that does all kinds of things that are just different from those two. Yeah. And I'm sure that's coming. Um, but as far as like an initial offering, the gameplay was really smooth. It was easy to pick up. Um, and once we figured out that everything was just shooting with opposed dice rolls, it was just memorizing stats. Um, we should have in hindsight had a quick reference sheet printed. Yep. We think there is one. There is one. And we, and we completely forgot to print it. <laughs> um, so we were referring to the rulebook quite a bit, which slowed us down a little bit in the first couple turns. But once we knew what our weapons did, it just really picked up quickly. So lots of fun. Thank you for painting this stuff and coming in. Thanks I hope you me. guys enjoyed watching Maelstrom's Edge. Um, if you guys do want to play a game of Maelstrom's Edge, I don't have an army. Um, but I do have the rulebook, and I could probably proxy an army. But if you have the starter set and you want to come in and play a game with me, uh, just like uh, Travis did, I have no problem playing some more. So we'll see you guys for more of this in the future. Until then, I'm Ash. This is Travis. Happy